Now I tell you, I am going to tell you about molecular gels. Now molecular gels, what are this? Everybody would understand by looking at it. I would not like to define this because the physical description of it tells you all that these materials, normally if it is a liquid, Newton's law suggests that under the influence of gravity this would fall. So these are non-Newtonian fluids. They defy gravity and therefore they are very different kind of systems. Those are known in terms of physics literature, viscoelastic fluids. In fact, there are many work which have been done by physicists. For example, the Dijan from France, you know, who discovered the soft matter. And Paul Flory from Stanford University, they have worked on soft materials. So I'm not going to define any of those things because uh, I would like to give you an impression of what can be done with them. So they are easier to recognize than to define. That is the most easy definition according to Dorothy Jordan Lloyd. And if you look at these molecular gels you can get from whole range of diverse molecules. The word LMMG means low molecular mass gelators. So these are small molecules, unlike macromolecules. Of course, you have gelatin. If you work with uh, protein, you know collagen. All of these molecules actually form gel. But I'm going to talk to you about molecules which are very small, molecular weight, few hundred, less than 1,000 typically. And so you have opportunity of synthesizing new properties. And I show you a handful of examples of structures. Structures are diverse. And many of them, actually all of them shown here, will give you some kind of a gel. They will immobilize a solvent molecule by in which they dissolve. And how does it happen? This happens whenever you form a solution. You take solute in a solvent, you dissolve it. Typically, you have a random distribution of the solutes. However, if you subject it to from a hot solution to cooling or cold solution to heating, they will undergo salt to gel transformation. And many times, this is a reversible phenomenon, thermoreversible. And what happens? You produce these molecules now turn into a very organized assembly. And so these organized assembly will give you kinetically stable aggregates which will actually give you gels. So random distribution to organization. And on the other hand, if you do manipulation with the solution, you can also get crystallized. These are thermodynamic end products. Or you have precipitates where you have no structure formation. So this is highly organized assembly and consequence of lattice formation. And so you can find out the differences in terms of their intermolecular interactions with precise atomic distances to define them. Now I will give you some examples from our own laboratory. We have made one class of gelators which you could consider as hydrogen bond acceptors because these ends, they have hydrogen bonding capabilities and these are hydrogen bonding capabilities which can donate. So these are donor molecules, this is acceptor molecule only in terms of hydrogen bonding. And if you put them together, I think you can make them very easily, I've shown them here. If you put them together, you find both acceptor and donor, they form gel and their mixture, one is to one mixture, also gives you gel. So there must be some cross talk between these two molecules. And you can follow this by IR spectroscopy. You can follow also the minimum gelator concentration, which essentially tells you how many 
molecules of these how many molecules would actually immobilize how many thousands or tens of thousands of solvent molecules so one molecule can actually immobilize several hundred thousand molecules that's why the gels are formed so in this gel you have the solvent in this case you have seen this is done by heptane or toluene this kind of solvent so hydrocarbons they can immobilize and you can follow their interaction the interaction takes place between the donor and acceptor and you can follow by typical spectroscopy you find the evidence of ground state interaction and some years ago we have defined a scale um, regarding various donor and acceptor you can see uh, the blue ones are <coughs> complementary to the red ones and when there is an overlap you will produce different kind of overlapping spectra that means energy transfer will be possible and that is what we have tried to do we have taken donor uh, with molecules which do not talk to each other but we have made them talk i'll explain this with a an example so you'll understand what we have done is cascade energy transfer so you take this molecule this is anthracene you know anthracene if you excite it at 356 nanometer you get this is the emission spectrum so this is the anthracene solution naked eye if you excite it it will give you this kind of blue fluorescence now to that if you add the donor molecule I have already shown you donor molecule. So you see there is a little bit of overlap here. It excites again 356 nanometer. You can see this is the emission. So there is an overlap. And because of that, now the color is changed from blue to sky blue. Now to that we add acceptor. Now we already know that donor and acceptor, they are interacting at the ground state. There is further overlap. And you can see now blue to sky blue to green and now we add rhodamine molecule rhodamine g you have another overlap so we can go to another color so essentially these two molecules if you mix them that is anthracene and rhodamine they will not talk to each other but we can make them talk by creating partners so these are energy has basic materials. So these molecules will give you different types of energy transfer property. And how do you prove it? You prove by energy funneling. So if you excite at various excitation wavelength, you see they are actually tunneling only in one region. So you can see the big, big build up in terms of the energy beta. And you can follow the cascade energy by lifetime measurements. I would not get into the details for lack of time. So essentially what we have done, we have taken four different dyes and first and fourth dye, they don't talk to each other. But the second and third dye, they talk to each other, which we have made by design. Now, because of their intervention, we can make this and this talk to each other. And this is a topic which is very similar to what we call as molecular machines. And you know this year's Nobel Prize is a topic on molecular machines. It's a reminiscent of that. So, these are the molecular structure. You can see anthracene and rhodamine 6G. They are not talking, but they can be made to talk. So, this is essentially, you know, we always see in human behavior. 2% they do not know each other, but they have some common friends through which they undergo interactions and that interactions we are establishing at the molecular level. And you can actually do this type of emission. Another thing more recently we have done, we have shown that Halogen and nitrogen, they form a special kind of bonding called halogen bonding. And you can see they can interact and they can interact and form this type of gels. These are soft interactions, either two unknown interactions. And you can see we can make different types of structure by their interaction. 
and we can follow them, their attributes and different ratios of water and ethanol, you can see different type of emission behavior and you can use it to detect purity of different type of food materials that are available. So this is thixotropy, I will not get into the details, this is the bidifringence properties and this is the crystal structure to give you the kind of interaction that is present. Another one, I will give you an example. This is about phthalic acid. You know, this molecule is very bad molecule. We all have, we all used to actually use this kind of bottles. These are plastics. The ions are very bad. Dioctyl phthalate based materials. And when we throw them, what happens is we have phthalic acid after hydrolysis, that is the end product. So we have now made a molecule which can detect only thalic acid. Now you can see this molecule is totally transparent, but when we put shine light, they will now give you this kind of color. So we can actually detect, if you have a small amount of thalic acid impurity, that can be detected at the nanometric level. And you can see they are structured by various types of force microscopy. You can see they form helical fibers and different kind of structures. And these structures are sustainable materials. You can see these material, they are self-standing, they have capability of load-bearing characteristics and so on and so forth. So these are soft materials which will not get crushed under weight. And this you see many times in natural products, in food materials, this type of properties. For example, you get from the kernel of a ripe fruit, you will get this. But I think we need to study the physics of those materials. Then only we can define their characteristics. So we have attempted the thick sortropy and various other types of viscoelastic and other parameter measurement. So we have physics attributes so that we can precisely define them. And you can see these are the kind of structure they form. Even in solution, if you throw them, they are not dissociating. So they are very stable. As long as you have thalic acid, they will behave like that. But if it is an isomer of thalic acid or any other molecule for that matter, it will not do. Another thing I will talk about, this is some years ago we have done this work, very simple amino acids, these are natural amino acids. These are fatty acylated products, these are like biosurfactants. And this is very important in this part of the country, where you have plenty of flora and fauna where you could get this kind of biosurfactant. Now these are designed, we have been working on uh, different proteins, I am not going to talk about that today. But we studied them, now the, we find that these molecules very different behavior in terms of gelation. So this molecule, if you take one or two milligrams of this, each of these molecules and dissolve them with, uh, in this case with toluene, you can see when it is glycine, it does not gel it, but when it is toluene, it gelates. Just one methyl group here makes all the difference. But when we add too many methyl groups, this is leucine, you can see nothing much happens. So there is some magic we can play just by playing around with the molecular structure. So we thought we can make use of this. In fact, we have gelate various kinds of aromatic hydrocarbon and we have looked at the basis of structure formation by infrared spectroscopy and we thought we can make fun out of this. How do you play the game you say in this? All of us know that oil and water do not mix. This is a very common knowledge. I mean, if you put oil and water, they face separate. But you know also about emulsions. Good examples of emulsion is milk. Always, every day we use emulsion as food. Because these emulsions are stabilized by surfactants. And these molecules are just like surfactants, so they could stabilize. But Oil and water, if they are made into an emulsion, it's a difficult task to separate them. You know, some time ago, this work we have been doing about 17 years ago, 16, 17 years ago. That time there was a disaster 
oil spill happening, you know, an Exxon Valdez, you know, there was a big oil spill. And there was a big um, noise in the United States. We were doing this in Bangalore. And what we discovered is a new phenomenon called phase selective generation. What we have done, you can see now two phases. One is oil, the other one is water. You can see we can clearly separate them and selectively only oil phase we can generate, keeping the water intact. So essentially, if you have an oil spill on a seabed, we offer an opportunity, we can throw in a little bit of this kind of molecule and selectively generate that water molecule. And perhaps you will be understanding this if I show you this movie. understand what I have just meant. So you have water and oil. You can see two phases. To that we are adding a small amount of gelatin. This is, imagine this is on a seabed, you have an oil spill. And you can actually immobilize that oil selectively. And after a few minutes, you see this oil has been in this case diesel has been gelated and you can actually scoop so you can do separation by very simple method <coughs> actually if you heat it a little bit this material will melt and you will recover you will recover the oil so that's the concept immediately I think there was a company in Texas who approached us and I think they are making a, you know you look at this, this actually when we have done this I think it featured in chemical engineering news in the United States. And you can see in Galapagos National Park, they were trying to struggle with the oil spill. And actually our work, when we have done this work from Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore, I think they suggested this could be a solution. In fact, I am gratified to tell you, our work was commented upon by Ben Feringa. The chemistry professor from Groningen University of Netherlands, who is this year's Nobel Prize winner of chemistry. So, we hit upon based on very simple concept, something which could be useful for daily application. Then we have also done because you have, you know, in the refinery you have both 
aliphatic hydrocarbon and aromatic hydrocarbon mixtures. And you can actually separate them by various such characteristics. And I am not going to get into that. Now I will tell you another concept we have done. We have put nanomaterials inside these gels and we have made gold nanoparticles of different kind. You can see in the structure how they have been engineered on the surface. And we made their gold nanoparticles suspended in Darwin and we make the gel. You can see they don't flow under the cavity. And if you look at once this gel, this is the scanning electron micrograph. You can see the fibrilla structure. But if we add very small weight percent of the gold nanoparticle, the structure changes completely. And this we can show that depending on what information we write on the gold nanoparticle, it changes the structure accordingly. So essentially we can achieve different kind of control of the properties. Now it reminds us of the time which was there more than 100 years ago. You know Charles Goodyear, you must have heard about Goodyear, you know the, in whose name Goodyear Tire Company is there. You know Goodyear discovered a very fundamental, you know he made a fundamental innovation. What was that? You know, rubber, which used to be natural rubber, which is a natural resin, is, used to be a solid in the winter, but it used to be an oil in summer. So nobody could ever make wheel out of rubber. What he did, he added a small amount of sulfur, what is known as famous vulcanization process. All of you must have studied in your high school. That is called cross-linking. Very similar kind of thing we have done here. And we can actually control their viscoelastic, that is flow behavior and yield stress. The material stress, how much it can take. And through which we could actually control their civil engineering properties. So applications can go from, you know, this kind of research will require borderless activity coming from physics, chemistry, biology and engineering. I will give you an example of our application in biology soon after. So this kind of interaction takes place and we have done various other things. I will show you some more examples and this is in this case we have done with carbon nanotube and carbon nanotube actually forms this kind of structure. So again I will not get into these uh, details stress, illustrate studies. If you are interested, I will tell you. But these uh, molecular gels which are non-conducting, you can make them ohmic current bearing material. So you can actually make a layer on the surface which could be conducting. If you want to make any of these photographs conducting so that you can use different type of electricity, piezoelectric or other kind of phenomena you want to introduce, you can do that. So there are opportunities. You can do, um, you know, this today's television displays, for example, they use this kind of material. So one can do this by addition of graphene or carbon nanotube. So we have done that. We can also melt them without heating. Just by laser, you can see, just by laser, we use a broadband laser. Five minute lasing melts it. And we can show that if you have the carbon nanotube there, it, it can be done very easily. But if there is no carbon nanotube there, even if you 30 minute lasing with the same intensity, you do nothing happens. So essentially you can control the salt to gel phenomenon. And similarly we have done with other carbon allotropes such as fullerene, carbon nanotube and graphene. Again, if you are interested, these are published literature. So they can be used and they could be used for various types of applications. Now I will tell you, we have also, I mean, if you are interested, there is a very recent uh, invited review article that we have published. This actually will give you the scope of this area of research. This is a very expanding, expensive area of research uh, where you could make various types of um, reinforced supramolecular gel and nanocomposite. And so this kind of structure which forms and 
we can have different type of structural see from this gel we can form different types of structural modification the this could be future generation of civil engineering materials now this is something again it's a regioisomer selective gelation that means whether this is a pyridine you know whether it is in the four position or three position or two position that can be varied very easily and we can form different type of materials again i will go fast on this lack of time so you can actually write these materials and you can make liquid crystal display so you can write iast here and depending on the temperature we can have different optical birefringence so color will be different we can also control by the humidity so just by reading the humidity we can give a broad color sense using this type of advanced material so we can make injectable materials and so this is hysteresis loop test what it does essentially i can give you the simple physics which is associated with it you know you make rice you boil rice and you produce a white material which you throw okay which is which forms gel if you cool it correct now if you shake it it becomes a liquid but if you put it into rest it becomes solid again so these are materials called thixotropic material so this is again a thixotropic material so you can make this type of material and they also form nano scale metal organic particles and you can follow them by various other dynamic light scattering scanning electron micrography and atomic force micrography and of course x-ray crystallography to characterize them something i will try to show you this is uh, this is the material that we have made and i will show you another example where we have used this is very interesting this is a very common problem not only in india but various other countries for example indian mangoes are famous worldwide but most of the time what happens your vegan pally for example George Bush has selected that is the best mango you can get. There are various forms. You go to Banaras, they will have another variety. You know, Lakshman Bhogar. I have shown here. This is guava. What happens on guava? You will find any of the guava you buy, there are indentation marks like that. That happens because of this bark. This is called Bacteria dorsalis. It's a fruit fly. and this fellow will sit on this you can see they are attracted because it there is it releases a pheromone and so in this case you can see this is infecting the fruit guava by bacteria dorsalis and then it lays its eggs once it lays its eggs you will see this indentation mark and then it becomes ripe most of the fruits are wasted so this is a big problem in our agriculture and if you actually slice this fruit you will get this kind of stuff once you see that you will never touch it worms inside this happens in mango this happens in most of the fruits that we consume very delicious food that when we consume we encounter such problem can we do something about it? so what's the signs behind so these are maggots and you know these maggots feed on the pulp of the fruit and this there is a metamorphosis once you cut the fruit these fellows will now metamorphose from worm into a fly so their life cycle goes on at the expense of the delicious fruits that we consume and this is a big problem agricultural research came to us so we thought maybe we can use our understanding and try to attack the problem so what we have done we have actually gelated 
using one of our gelator. And this is a pheromone, this is called methyl eugenone. This pheromone we have gelated now. You can see these are electron micrographs, these are the thermotropic studies, these are viscoelastic studies. So we have done physics of them to characterize the material. And most interestingly, what we find, they have very different release behavior. Now pheromone, which is released in nature based on their vapor pressure, how volatile they are. Now once we gelate, you can see the slopes are very different. Now you can see, this is the difference at 10 degree, this is at 20 degree, this is at 30 degree, this is at 50 degree. What does it imply? It implies that in peak summer, we can use these gels and this pheromone will be released in a sustained fashion. That means these pheromones are sex pheromones. So, female species of the bacteria dorsalis, fruit flies, will be attracted. They think these males are around. They will come for mating. But there is no male. So they will not be able to produce egg. They will come because of this sex attractant. However, because of this thing, this release is very, very slow. So even in peak summer, our this pheromone is not released. You can see so much of the tension. So we thought that we can use this. So what we have done, we have gone into field trials in Baranasi. I'll show you that. So we have made a very simple device. So essentially we have taken what? a bottle like this. A little bigger, one little bottle, and we made a small hole. And you can see there is a water here, and this is gel. Okay, this is about 250 microliter in size, or higher. <coughs> and you can see this is there is this gel is there, which is made of pheromone. And you can see groups are coming. They are coming in very large number and then they are committing suicide. And you can see every day we can collect how many fruits, fruit flies are coming per unit. And this we have done in open orchard. And you can see this is the statistical data for the entire month. Again, I'll show you a movie. Now, this is in Benaras. This is the fruit torture we have got. <coughs> and you can see this is the bacteria dorsalis in light infected. We are there inside the orchard. And you can see we have taken very simple TLC plates on which we have laced this pheromone. You can see after a few minutes only, they are coming very good in number. And you can see after 45 minutes or so, you can see this is neat pheromone and this is a gelated pheromone. Always you will see around the gelated pheromone, you have more significant population of this fruit fly. And we have done this more than three weeks and we have demonstrated this unambiguously that they, they are not, because of the sustained release behavior, pheromone remains there months together. Even in peak summer, even in Rainy season, it does not have any problem. So this is actually a patented technology we are now given to agriculture research based on which uh,
of chemistry, physics, engineering and ecology, we can actually make something very useful. I think we are now applying this in various other forms, like forms in fish, in aquaculture, where we can have <coughs> very useful application using fundamental science. And uh, I think this is again published, so you can read it, it's also patented. And then I will show you some other examples where we can make different other kind of hybrid material. This is done with renewable. This is, you know, orginolic acid. This is from Arjuna tree. You can actually take that. And we can make this type of material. And you, we can characterize them. And you can see this is orginolic acid. It uses from gel. And you can make different type of hybrid materials. This is their force microscopy or atomic force microscopy structure giving you nano dimension material. And you can use them to form carbon carbon bond forming reaction. You can do <coughs> Suzuki coupling, you know, egg coupling. These are Nobel Prize winning chemistry some years ago it was proposed. So you can actually form these two molecules can form this iodobenzene and phenyl boronic acid, they can form by phenyl. So that kind of chemistry we can do. We have studied that. And another one we have done more recently using different type of heat set gel. So these are various possibilities one can use. I have just shown you some examples. Perhaps because of lack of time, I'll conclude my talk. <coughs> <coughs>